welcome back to another episode guys hopefully not as stressful as the last one i completely replaced the through hole fitting so that we can make our final leg up the windward islands to antigua where we clear into nelson's dockyard which is an absolutely beautiful place so come and join us have a look around we've been on the hard all weekend now um soon we'll be getting with the job sorting out the throttle and the leaking valve at the front we're going to be launched this afternoon back onto the valve so put it back together it's been glued it's been it's, it's a bit little bit permanent you should really do ptfe but one of the guys in the yard who's done hundreds of valves he said use 5200 which is like a sealant it's a bit permanent and we used a loctite thread lock on the so you can see you've got the elbow joint that goes in so that black stuff is the 5200 elbow joint and then on this connection is a uh, loctite and yeah so it's permanent I've got no intentions of taking this off again until it has to be replaced. And when it has to be replaced, you need to grind the thing out anyway. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, in the straps in the water, um, hovering here to check if the leak and the throttle's working. Yeah, um, yeah. so the, he used thread lock and he said that thread lock's gonna be good and he is gonna do it and it's not. It's the joint where he's put thread lock. I can't tell if it's just that joint or, but the thing is where it's thread lock permanent, the whole through water valve is now going to have to be done. Well, that was short lived. Um, we got hauled in the water. Um, throttle works now, which is great. Check that. Um, Mark went down, checked the sea clocks, and there was water coming through. Um, he was hoping it was where we, well, he reconnected the pipe on. Um, thought he might not have done that properly, it could be leaking through there. Um, so he dried everything. Um, nah, it's leaking where it was before. So he thinks because they used the permanent Loctite seal on it, I'm um, gonna have to take the entire pipe out um, and refit the whole system. So that's not great. Um, so we're back on the hard again. Yeah, but different view this time. We're over this side. Instead of over there we were before. But yeah, not not the best. Um, not really what we were hoping for. Uh, just a lot more money and a lot of time. Because the plan was to head up to Antigua. Uh, try to find a silver lining, but hey ho, boat life. muffler on I do apologize so here is the previous hole I'll try and shield from the wind um, the, whoever put the through hole valve on previously uh, the stem the hole was slightly too big for the threaded stem that goes through so all they've done is just use massive amounts of sycophlex so what we've done what one of the yard boys who's helping out have done is we've put some uh, uh, filler um epoxy inside that's going off that should be going off pretty soon we're then going to re-drill and then the threaded the threaded uh, fitting will fit in nice and snugly the new valve is in uh, you can see all the sealant the white sealant so it's not just PTFE, we've really gone to town on this and put uh, 5200. Um, so yeah, this should do the job. Look where we are. Launch went okay. Didn't bother filming um, just because you've seen a launch. Uh, if you look back through the other episodes and I was just hyper stressed and anxious about the whole thing but it's dry the hose is back on so the, I didn't put the hose on to start with I wanted to check the actual valve itself was good um, which it was and then I put the hose in hot water because it's quite a hard hose thick hose so you just put it in there makes it a bit more malleable great word put it on the uh, fitting 
Jubilee clipped it up and so far so good. Maddie was helming out here to the anchorage and I was just popping down. So I am in the process of getting the boat ready for our passage to Antigua, hopefully Antigua, leaving about 5.36 in the morning. Um, it's saying about a day and a half to get there. I will know if I'm gonna make the anchorage in daylight, if I can get to the top of Guadeloupe, day A, which is that anchorage, if you look back in the episodes, day A is a pretty cool little anchorage. Um, if I can get there by six or 7 a.m., I am gonna make a beeline straight up to Antigua. I'll have time. If it's uh, if it's not, because there's a, there's a few islands with a, you know big wind shadows, so tomorrow night I could just be drifting. I don't really wanna put the engine on, but we'll see what we do for time. If I get to day eight and it's eight, nine in the morning, I'll just pull into day eight for a day or two until uh, we get good winds, good seas. So that's the rough idea, but as you know already, I'm not gonna say that's the plan because it will just change, plans always change. Right, I'm gonna get the boat ready, um, get the hydro wing up and running, get the rudder on, get the line sorted, get the sail bag ready, and Madeline is cooking us. What we have in? Chili. Chili. Having chili, can't wait. It's something easy that we can heat tomorrow on passage. Um, so, yeah, like I said, one overnight one. So just make it, keep it simple. If you just cook loads of food, you can just reheat it on that passage. Right, see you in the morning. Hey, birthday boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're up early. Going to try and make the whole passage to Antigua, but we'll see how it goes. I know, like I explained before, I know if we can make the last jump by six o'clock tomorrow morning, if we're anywhere near the north of Guadeloupe. Very tired. I shouldn't be this tired on my birthday. But anyway, we're off. Pretty good sail last night. We're all the way up at day eight, which is where I wanted to be at pretty much this time. I'm standing on the bow because uh, Maddie was just getting her head down for a bit, but I noticed um, some fishing pots. We're pretty close in, I'll show you where we are. We're gonna be going around that headland and um, yeah, there were just, I. I a lot of pots went flying past so i've got maddie up she's on the helm i'm up on the bow watching because it's very low light and hopefully we don't go over any but uh yeah the plan will be hopefully get around this headland or another headland actually it's a little bit more of um guadeloupe get some wind and go straight into antigua and that'll be that'll be um, a big tick in the box getting there
behind us. Guadeloupe to our port. You may not be able to see it. Montserrat. You can't go to the south of that island, I believe, because it's still an active volcano. But more importantly, to our on our bow, again, you won't be able to see Antigua. I was just explaining to Mads, this is, um, for me, just a sec, for me, it's kind of like an emotional passage. I feel emotional about this one, and I don't know why. Well, I kind of do know why. If you watched my first episodes, I crossed the English Channel, one of the busiest, or the busiest shipping lane in the world, on spring tides, with bare minimal experience. I didn't really feel anything about that trip. I've crossed the Atlantic Ocean. I didn't really feel anything about that trip. I've sailed pretty much all of the Windward Islands other than Trinidad Tobago further down south. Didn't really feel much about that, but this, for some reason, getting to Antigua is kind of emotional for me because well, firstly, last couple of episodes the last episode is i've just had a bit of a time with the boat um and the sail the last sail overnight sail we've done was pretty crap so this uh this overnight one we've done was really really nice had the engine on for quite a bit in the lee of the islands but it meant that maddie was comfortable sitting on the helm to do a watch which meant that i've managed to grab a couple of hours sleep out through the night so i don't feel so beat up but I think it's because this island is going to be the start of our westward bound journey towards America. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Leeward Islands. The Windwards are okay, but they get very samey. So um, yeah, this is just, and we've been waiting for weeks to get up here, waiting for the right weather. And we're finally here. Um, would have been good to have got here yesterday on my birthday and celebrated in the Anchorage. However, we're going to have a, a belated birthday celebration this evening I think in the Anchorage after we've checked in but yeah I just wanted to just wanted to tell you that yeah this to me is I feel uh, yeah <clears throat> feels good it feels good to get to Antigua um, and I hope I've had my little tantrum and I hope that nothing else seriously goes wrong that makes me want to sell the boat because that niggly feeling of you know not wanting to be here is still sitting in there somewhere but uh hopefully hopefully i get over it um onwards and upwards Don't know if you could see that there. We was just about to pick up that whole fishing line. I saw it at the very last second and I had to jive out the way. That was so close. We, I just had to crash jive. Luckily, very luckily, there was only 10 knots of wind. So the boom only come around, you know, moderately hard. But um, yeah, I had to crash jive in front of a boat pretty much. He was on his way out. Um, but yeah, there was a whole, you couldn't really see it very good on the GoPro, but I was very close to catching a whole uh, fishing net. Uh, yeah, that would have just caught around the keel, around the rudder. I would have been, I would have been done for then. We nearly had uh, the pots that are just up north of uh, Guadeloupe. So we've had a couple of lucky escapes at the end of this passage. We have chose the wrong day for an entry into this Falmouth Harbour. There's a race going on. There's boats left, right in Chelsea. Cutting right across the entrance, this cat. And I ain't got a clue what I'm doing, so good luck to them. <laughs> We are here, Falmouth Bay, Antigua. That was 
171 nautical miles took us one day seven hours with an average speed of five and a half knots i'll show you the track a little later right now this is my favorite part oh you happy mads i'm a happy girl you a happy girl i'm a happy girl Hi. <laughs> morning we are in Antigua we got into um, Falmouth Harbour yesterday but it's too late to check in so we're going in this morning to Customs and Immigration um, it's in English Harbour which is just across from us so hopefully it'll only be a short walk but we'll see welcome to Falmouth Bay Marina area We wanted to film the super yachts that are here as we come in. Antigua is uh, very affluent by the look of it, but the sun was kind of in our face coming in, so you might not have been able to see too much. So on the way out, we'll show you how much money is sat around here right now. So we need to go over to the next I guess Bay, which is uh, English Harbour. And in English Harbour, there is the clearing, clearing point. So we're going to go and clear into the island. Um, and that's where, that's where Nelson Dockyard also is. Um, Maddie's just stopping for a photo. This looks pretty cool. I've still got to have a birthday dinner. So uh, that might be our little birthday and a celebratory dinner for getting here it's taken us a while but yeah so uh we're heading over morning <laughs> brilliant so yeah <laughs> rasta so yeah we're gonna head clear in find somewhere for a coffee um i'm really looking forward to looking at nelson's dockyard let's go and have a look Morning. Morning. I reckon these are all the original buildings. That's us cleared in to Antigua this probably that's the most hasslesome check-in I've done that it was backwards and forwards to this desk and that desk and and expensive so there's two main check-in marines or only two on the island Jolly Harbour's over on the west coast this one um, Falmouth Nelson's dockyard you pay a park fee for being here which is expensive so what a lot of people do is check in over at Jolly Harbour and then come round at some point but I didn't want the hassle of up anchoring and coming back round again so um, and it's coming into wind um, I just paid the extra but it was like 90 US dollars which is 
probably about four times more expensive than the most expensive island we've been to yet. But there we go, it's done, cleared in. We need to go get some data. Um, we're gonna go and have a little explore. Really hope you enjoyed this episode everybody if you did please give it a like um, if you've got any comments or tips please leave them any questions be happy to answer them um, if you're not already subscribed please subscribe hit the notification bell so you know when the next one's out so on next week's episode we catch the start of the Rock 600 Caribbean race We're not really into racing but it was so cool to watch the warrior has her old sails taken off ready for nice new shiny clean sails hopefully we can get a little bit more speed i've also bought a snuffer um, that's that thing that i'm dragging across the floor it's for my cruising shoot i've never used it so it's all going to be new so be sure to watch that and we have the honor and the privilege of being invited into a very exclusive club called the top club um, why don't you join us and see if we make it in there's actually a few strict rules that we have to uh to stick by and an exam we have to pass so join us next time guys thanks again for watching take care